What is the most amazing trip you've ever taken? Not long ago, I would have had trouble answering this question. Probably my jeep tour from Cologne to Dakar? Or one of my many trips to Ireland? The fact is, after a three-week, 3,000-kilometer tour with an off-road vehicle through Namibia, I can now confidently say, we have a winner. Before I get to the desert, the dunes, the mountains, and the animals, I'd like to introduce the cast. First, there's my wife, Max, and me, Andre. The journey began with a drive to Frankfurt Airport. Although our flight was not until the evening, we arrived there shortly after midday. We passed the waiting time with window shopping and visiting restaurants. Finally, at 9 p.m., we took off. After 10 and a half hours, we landed in Windhoek. We had two full days before we could pick up our car. We took it easy relaxing in our lovely hotel. We walked to a nearby shopping mall called Vern Hill and got a SIM card from the Namibian provider MTC. It was limited to a month and offered 25 gigabytes of data for the equivalent of 15 euros. You can't complain about that. On both evenings, we visited Joe's Beer House, a pub slash restaurant that is a must visit when in Windhoek. We quickly found out that the food everywhere was excellent and by our standards extremely inexpensive. Then the preliminary was finally over and it started, albeit with starting difficulties, as I will explain shortly. We picked up the car, a Toyota Hilux with four-wheel drive from the car rent. From there we went to a gas station. and then to a nearby shopping center called Hilltop to get supplies for the next few days. Yeah. 
fridge, not the fridge. When we came out of the supermarket an hour later and approached our vehicle, I could see from a distance that something was wrong. There was a huge gap between the tailgate and the side wall. Someone had evidently tried to pry open the tailgate. Thankfully without success as our suitcases were in the back. Although we were quite shaken, it was incomprehensible how this could happen when the security personnel were standing just a few meters away. Oh well. We called the car rental right away and they told us to come back immediately. The top was exchanged and then the real journey began. Our first stop was the Lake Oanop Resort. Mm. Lake Oanop is a reservoir about 80 kilometers south of Windhoek, so it mm. was a short driving stage. Cool. Ultimately, the day ended on a positive cool. note. This is my hot pot chicken curry, mm -hmm. and I have to try it. Ah, okay. Thank you. Oh, two minutes. We are on pitch C7, which is approximately 250 meters from the reception. Here is the toilet, sink and shower. Hot water works excellently. Here you can turn on the light. This is our kitchen area. There are power outlets everywhere. Here too you can turn on the light. And over there is our living area so to speak. And what I noticed, no matter how hot it is outside, it's always relatively cool under the roof. I guess it's because of the roof construction. Really well done. There's an outlet for our fridge which runs all the time. And another light switch. And this is our view of Lake Oanop in the early morning. Since it hasn't rained here for three years, the lake is only three quarters full. Normally, the water reaches almost up to our pitch. Over there is the restaurant. Let me zoom in. They have fantastic food there.
After two nights, we said goodbye to Lake Oahu. We drove southwest. Ahead of us was a journey of just over 200 kilometers. The first 40 kilometers were paved, the rest was more or less good gravel road. In some sections we were quite shaken due to the washboard surface. A few kilometers past the town of Norcas, we saw a sign reading Alberta Farm 1 kilometer apple tart and freshly made coffee. We spontaneously decided to stop there and were surprised. A burger farm was a shop where there was quite a lot to buy, from groceries to souvenirs and other useful items. We drank coffee and each ate a piece of apple tart, which tasted extremely good. The landscape became increasingly barren and mountainous. We drove through the Nauklub Mountains and the impressive Gaub Pass. After five and a half hours, we reached our destination, the Nami Desert Lodge. This is the Nami Desert Camp and unfortunately, I made a mistake when booking. When I booked this campsite, I didn't realize it's good five kilometers away from the main lodge. Of course, we can use the facilities at the lodge, like the Wi-Fi, swimming pool, etc. But here we are all alone in the wide open space. I don't know, maybe it's nice that there's no one else around. We would try to make the best out of it. We're going to spend two nights here. Das kann anderer hier ist. Wir werden jetzt versuchen, das Beste daraus zu machen. Zwei Nächte werden wir hier verbringen. Tschüss. What you were dreaming of, yeah? Ja. Ja. And how's it going? Yeah, good. The next morning, we set off at 5.15 a.m. Ahead of us lay 100 kilometers to Namib Naukluft National Park. The first 70 kilometers were gravel road, the rest asphalt. We reached the national park after one hour and a half. Then it was time to wait until 7.15 when the park would open. We were the fourth car in a long queue. Once inside the national park, Dune 45 was our first stop. I went all the way to the top. Max didn't want to do that and turned back after about a quarter of the way. For those who decided to go all the way up the dune, it was a race against time as the sun was rising and it was getting warmer by the minute. However, those who made it to the top were rewarded with a fantastic view.
the descent was super easy. We then drove to Dead Play, a depression between the dunes with century old dead trees. Due to the special microclimate and the lack of moisture, the wood decomposes very slowly. The round trip was a challenge on a section of about 2 kilometers, which could only be mastered with deflated tires due to the deep sand. Those who hadn't reduced their tire pressure beforehand got stuck. In the afternoon, we relaxed at the lodge. Here everything was organic, even the lawnmower. These are the sanitary facilities. Here's a washroom. Cold and hot water. Here is a toilet. Lockable. Here is a shower. Everything very clean and well kept. Naturally also cold and hot water. Also lockable. Here is the next shower. Exactly the same again because this is a double pitch. Let me walk around the house because there's more to see. Hi Max. Another toilet. And here a men's toilet. Everything very nice. That's our view. The neighbors are about 200 meters away. After two nights at the Namib Desert Camp, we continued our journey. Our first stop on the way to Svakogmund was Solitaire. The place consists of a gas station and a restaurant in the middle of the desert. This restaurant is famous for its apple tart. We tried it and compared it to the one from Alberta Farm. I would say there is no clear winner. Both taste excellent. We are approaching Wolfis Bay, which is 40 kilometers from Swakopmund. Thursday. 
Shortly after 4 p.m., we arrived in Swakopmund. In the city of 45,000 inhabitants, the German past is omnipresent. As soon as the sun disappears, it gets cold. The next day we took a catamaran tour. I don't like the... With regard to the weather, we were lucky because the sea was calm and the sun was shining. Okay. Here we go. You see Charlie? <laughs> Give him a hug, he's nice and friendly. <laughs> the trip lasted about four hours and went to Pelican Point and then around the headland into the open sea. Okay, the 4x4. Okay, there, there I mean, is. Uh, I don't know, a car. Uh, a 4x4 car. Yeah, there's no Toyota Hilux. I'm not yeah. getting on a quad bike. Everybody having a glass here? Yes. Hey, Pelican, come here. Now, Andre, take a picture of me with it. Uh, here. After our return from the sea voyage, we headed to the beach.
For the third day in Svakopmund, we had booked a trip into the desert to Sandwich Harbor. Michael, our guide, took plenty of time to provide us with interesting information. So there were doctor boats at some. They're extinct. Mm -hmm. The next stage covered 184 kilometers from Svakop, first a short stretch along the Skeleton Coast and then to Spitzkoppe. Shortly after we left the asphalt road at Hentis Bay and got onto the gravel track, we saw a cyclist waving with an empty water bottle in his hand by the roadside. We stopped and found out that he was participating in a 24-hour charity race. He said his water supply had run out because he had underestimated the wind. It was still 16 kilometers to the next drink station. Naturally, we helped him out. I told him I admired him. The mountains of the Orongo range could already be seen from a distance. We arrived at our campsite at Spitzkoppe around 4 p.m. I climbed up the so-called arch, but was obviously wearing the wrong footwear with my Crocs. During the spectacular sunset, we talked about Moses the little boy we had met shortly before. We decided to visit him and his family before continuing our journey the next day. Hi Moses, how are you today? I'm fine. Okay, so Moses, how old are you? 11. You're 11 years old. Yes. And do you go to school? Yes. Okay, and why are you not in school now? Because it's holiday. Ah, Saturday it's holiday. and Sunday. Ah, okay, I forget, yeah. Okay, so and this is your brother? Yes. What's your name? Gonzalez. Gonzalez, okay. And um, I saw yesterday, we met yesterday. Yes. I saw that you sell stuff there, yeah? Yes. So that, uh, that's what you do when you come back from school, yeah? Yes. Okay. And you live here, yeah? Yes. You with can who? come check with Thank my you. mother. What's the name of the dog? Fire. 
Fire, okay. And is fire a nice dog? A yes. friendly dog? Yes. Okay. <laughs> nice. Okay. So, and you live here with whom? With my mother and my grandmother and my auntie. Okay. And my brother. Okay. That one is my father. Ah. Hi. I brought a beer for you. Yes. <laughs> so, that's your dad, yeah? Yes. Okay. Huh? So, what's your name? Colin, I'm Andre. Yes. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. you don't have a problem, huh? Yes. Yes, yes you do? Yes, no, no. Okay. That one okay. is my grandfather. Okay. Hello, sir. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Good. Mm -hmm. My name is Andre. How are you? Okay, I'm fine. My name is uh, Imania. Imania. Okay. okay. Can I look? Nice Take a look? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you are very kind. Okay. Okay. Welcome in our house. Thank you very much. Yes, this is, this is so energy. interesting for us. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes, so you have electricity? No electricity in just this house. Okay, but uh, where do you get the uh, power from? We, we, we buy candles. candles. This is what we use. Okay. This is a candle. But isn't that a fridge? This is a fridge, but uh, just for a decoration. Okay, we okay. We don't have any electricity. Okay. No water here inside. Okay. This house is not having water, uh -huh. no electricity. Okay. This is our sitting room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes, I you see. You are welcome in this room. So uh, that means you don't have a TV, nothing? Yes. Nothing. Oh, that's nothing. terrible. This is our head. Yeah. Bedroom. Uh -huh. Also other side. Yeah. Where do you sleep, Moses? This side. Ah, okay. Me and my father and my brother. Mm -hmm. We sleep here. You see? Okay. Okay, I see. Yes. Okay. This is a storeroom. Okay. Yes. I see it. Huh? This empty bottles is for someone next door. Okay. And they have come and pick it at our uh -huh. storeroom. Okay. Yes. So I have one question. So I like Moses very much. Yeah? Okay. If so I want to send him something from Germany. Okay. So what do I do? Do you have an address here? Or? Yes, yes. He's having, yes. Ingrid, he's having a smartphone. Okay. Yes, email address. Yeah, email address is yeah, good. You can give me the email address. Uh -huh. Write for me down. Okay. Email huh? address. And then you can give me all the information, yeah? Yes, yes. yes. Okay. Then I can send for you a mother's uh, bank account. Okay, yes. that's very good. Bank, yes. bank account, then you mm -hmm. can send him something. There. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> so how old are you? 33. Okay, you look you look so young. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thirty three. Everybody here looks so young. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. How old? Ingrid, you are How very pretty. Thank you. <laughs> Max, let me How take a picture. You? How old do you think he is? <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Forty three. Forty oh, three. At twenty years. He's sixty three. Oh, no, you're joking. No, I am. You're welcome to see our house. Yeah? Okay. You want to block the What do you want to do later? I want to be a president of Namibia. Yeah. Okay. okay. Then, uh, she's asking me how I will survive when the rain is coming. Yeah. yeah. Then I show her the holes here. Yeah. So, so uh, then I was asking her to help me with some little money so that I can buy some zinc and some plants for me. No problem. Yes. I will be here. Well, I was telling her about the project I've done at school with kids and the bottles. Mm -hmm. And all the money. Yeah, but Ma the Max, this is real help. No, I didn't. Because it I arrived. Did. Okay, I know I what you mean, yeah. And we bought all the school uniforms uh -huh. with the money. Yeah. yeah. Then we headed to Kamja. On the way, we stopped at a place called Yours. It was chaos there because participants of a charity rally had also chosen this transport hub as a stopover. For this reason, Max quickly came back out of the restaurant because the waiting time was too long. The vegetation slowly became denser and greener.
We arrived at Anne's Lodge in Kamjab in the late afternoon. Our sanitation facility. A shower with a view. Anne's Lodge is very original and decorated with all sorts of chalk. We were the only visitors to the restaurant whose food was excellent. Since Macy, the barmaid, and Donovan, the cook, had nothing else to do, they eventually started dancing. Max joined them. And later the kitchen helper did too. <laughs> The next morning, we continued north to Konena River Lodge on the Angolan border. We had barely left Kamja when Max shouted, Giraffe! I hit the brakes immediately. When I got out to film, the young animal ran away. Beyond the town of Upuvo, the good asphalt road turned into a gravel track. We crossed numerous dried up riverbeds. After a five hour drive, we reached the lodge, where we had booked three nights. View across to Angola. Various animals roam the campsite. Our neighbor Neil from South Africa and I went on a canoe trip on the river. We were taking a few kilometers upstream, put the boat in the water there and paddled back to the camp with the current. Neil, how are yeah. you? I'm very well man. Beautiful out here in the Kanani today. Cool. Absolutely beautiful day. The river is lovely. Yeah. And here we have Andre paddling down the Kunani River. On the left bank we have Namibia. And our campsite is just a little bit further downstream. 
on the right bank to be able to say we had been to Angola, we briefly docked on the Angolan side. <laughs> The next day, Max and I booked a tour on a proper boat. That way, she didn't have to worry about the crocodile. The Konani is a beautiful river, which I would compare in width to the Mosul. Naturally, the sundowner was included in the prize, the gin and tonic. Max illegally stepping on Angolan soil. From Konene River Lodge, we set off on our longest stage, spanning over 500 kilometers to the Namutoni camp in Etosha National Park. The first 40 kilometers of the road were extremely bad. From Ruakana, we then drove on asphalt. When we stopped for fuel, I noticed we had a flat tire. The matter was resolved within 15 minutes. The area we drove through was densely populated by Namibian standards. The people there did not seem to be in extreme poverty anymore. We didn't see a single white face. As we approached Etosha National Park, we returned to the gravel track. Okay, this is gone now. In the park, we stayed four nights at two different campsites. Without wanting to disparage them, I have to say they were not comparable to the previous ones and were quite unromantic. Max said they reminded her of large parking lots, little shade and no privacy, clearly designed for mass processing. At least cute animals roamed around. Restaurant and swimming pool as in all other lodges. The water hole at Okakueo camp was always well attended. In the mornings we drove around the park.
After one last look over the camp, we continued to Waterberg Plateau, a distance of 281 kilometers. It is customary in Namibia to have a check when leaving the supermarket. <laughs> but you should know that, you know? Thanks, my friend. While passing through a suburb of Ochivarongo with German street names, we saw magnificent houses. The last eight kilometers were again on a gravel road. We were greeted directly by a giraffe. The lodge was simply fantastic. Bathroom and bedroom were spacious enough to accommodate an entire soccer team. The surroundings are a paradise for hikers. We followed in the footsteps of the Battle of Waterberg in 1904 between the German colonial forces and the Herrero people. For me, as a history enthusiast, this was one of the highlights of the trip. Yeah, yeah. And as 
soon as they are strong enough, the Herrero in the camp of the mission. Yeah. On the second afternoon, we participated in a rhino tour. The rhinos are under special protection and are monitored 24-7 by an armed ranger. After this, our final stop, we drove back to Wintok. The leg of the journey was just about 300 kilometers long. Our journey had come full circle, so to speak. For a minister's convoy, everyone had to pull over to the right, sorry, to the left. We had another day and a half in the capital before our flight. We visited the Independence Museum and explored the city center. The old fortress is the oldest building in Windhoek. In the evening, we visited Joe's beer house once more. Before departing, we went to a bank to send 200 euros to Moses' family. What remains is a beautiful memory that no one can take away from us. places we visited and many nice people we met. Most of all, I want to thank my dear wife. Max, you were the best travel companion one could imagine. If this video resonated with you, you also might be interested in the book I wrote about the trip. There I go into detail. The title of the book is Exploring Southwest in a 4x4 through Namibia and it is available on Amazon. I left a link in the video description.